I'm really into the really fluffy brows and I'm going to be using the crayon case brow pomade in ebony and I'm going to take an angle brush and I'm just going to line the bottom part of my eyebrows. I'm making sure that I'm just creating a tail because I don't have a tail and I'm just trying to fill in the little sparse areas that I have but I really don't go too much in the front because like I said I'm really into the natural looking eyebrows. It looks really fluffy and natural. And um, with the same brush, I'm just slowly like filling them in by brushing up. And um, yeah, and I take up brow gel, I just start brushing it upwards and it starts looking really natural. Like I'm addicted to this style of eyebrows. It's insane. Going in with Anastasia's concealer in the shade 2.5, I'm going to take a flat brush from Morphe and I'm going to clean out and sculpt out my brows. Literally, this is the best part because this is when your brows are really going to look defined. They're really going to look clean. And um, this is when I really make my shape because, you know, in the beginning, it looks kind of messy when you fill them in. And um, this shade is a little bit, like, pink on me, but it's not that noticeable when everything else goes on top. <laughs> Going in with the NYX HD eyeshadow primer, I am going to put that on with a brush and then I'm going to use my fingers to blend it out and make sure that it's really dry because this is literally like glue guys. Like literally you have to make sure it's dry before you go on top with concealer because then everything's going to look really patchy. So now I'm going in with the concealer because I want everything to be like very, you know, a clean clean base so that when I go in with my eyeshadow everything looks seamless and very blended so now I'm going in with setting powder of course any setting powder just to make sure that it's all good now I'm going in with my favorite Morphe palette and those two colors and I'm going to use them as my transition color because you need transition colors when you're doing any any look now I'm going in with this rusty kind of orangey brown color it's so hard to like explain it but this is the star of the show and I'm gonna be moving it from inner corner to outer corner and I'm gonna keep packing it on until I feel happy with it and you guys will see how constant I go on and how you know dark I want it <music> Now going in with this caramel color that I used already in my transition, I'm going to go again to make sure that everything's blended and you can actually see the caramel now that I have done the dark colors. And I'm just going to keep blending that from inner corner to outer corner, but don't blend too much because then it's going to look too mushy. Yet again, I'm going again with the reddish orange dark color from inner corner to outer corner because this is really going to be the star of the show and I want to make sure that you see the darkness when I go in later on and now I'm going in with a darker brown color and I'm going to concentrate this on the outer corner of my eye and I'm going to slowly just blend it you see how everything just looks like very circular and that's how I want it to stay so I don't want to just smoke out the brown it'll just look really weird <music> Now going in with this NYX Vivid Brights um, gel liner or gel eyeshadow, I'm going to pat that onto my lid and I'm going to get it into a circular shape and you guys are going to see how popping that looks. <music> Now 
Now using my finger, I'm going to slightly blend it out so it's not that harsh. And then taking the same brush I've been using the whole time with nothing on it. Again, I'm just going to blend that so that it doesn't look too harsh. And then I'm going to add again that red color and I'm going to blend it out. Using this Jordana eyeshadow, it's literally $3. I'm using it in the center of my eye just so that I can blend it from the outer corner slowly to the inner corner so that it looks seamless when I go in with the main color on my lid. Now I'm going in with this NYX eyeshadow and I'm going to use my fingers because I feel like I'm going to get the best application with it and I'm just patting that onto my lid and mixing these two colors together gives me the perfect rose gold combination that I wanted and you guys can still see the darkness around my eyes so it still gives me kind of like that halo effect which I am obsessed with right now. Now I'm going in with one of my favorite eyelash companies of all time, which is Lash Dream. I'm going in with the style Daydream, and you guys can use my code CARDASH to get some money off. Um, their lashes are absolutely amazing. They last me so long, and they look so fabulous. Like, I literally feel like a diva every time I wear their lashes. And um, I'm just going in with the lash, and then I'm using a tweezer to squeeze in the inner corner and the outer corner and make sure that they're really you know put in there because we're not trying to fly off today today's not the day nope not today so now i'm going in with the cover effects mattifying primer and it says that it's for and it's like an anti-acne treatment like all in one you know that's really cool because I break out like disrespectfully especially on my month um, other than that I don't really break out but I do have a lot of acne scars because I used to have whoo, whoo, I used to have such bad acne um, so yeah so this is good and I have really really oily skin like it's like disrespectfully oily at this point and I'm like it's winter like it's not winter but it's bodily and I'm still like Super duper oily. So I'm gonna use three different foundations. Um, and I cannot use the Fenty foundation by itself because it is very oily on me. And it's like it says it's supposed to be like a it says a matte foundation, but it does say soft matte. So I'm guessing it's like not hardcore matte, and I need that like extra duper 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 matte foundation. So I love the way that it goes on my skin, but I just don't like that it's not super matte and i don't like that it fills in like it shows my pores like disrespectfully because it's like i know it's supposed to be like skin but like my skin is trash so like no thank you but yeah that's my struggle right now and then i use the sephora foundation which is pretty bomb but um it's not really my tone and yeah we're gonna mix those two and i'm gonna do just a tad bit of the nyx drops which if anybody that knows me knows I like them and I'm not gonna like put a lot just like literally a drop because it's so dark and I'm so pale now like, you see how it's like already a darker than my color skin but it's cool because my neck is a little bit more yellower than my face so make sure when you get your foundations that you match your neck not your face so yeah I'm just gonna put that all over my skin boom 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 I feel like my swelling looks amazing like it's not that bad it's still there but it's not bad like I look like a human that's the best part so now I'm gonna go in with two concealers and they are from one of them is from wet n wild and the other one is um Maybelline fit me um I'm really into drugstore concealers like I feel like no need to pay $35 for a concealer unless I'm gonna look like like Beyonce or like JLo then I don't find the point to be honest 
Um, I feel like drugstore works like perfectly fine with me. So yeah, this is the Wet n Wild one. And I like this one a lot because it's like it feels mattifying. It's insane how I like feel it matte already. Maybe it's just the cheapness. <laughs> But I like it. It's really good. And then the Fit Me. Whew. The Fit Me. The Fit Me is my favorite. It's so bomb. I use the shade 20. And it's like I love yellow. Like yellow undertones and concealers. Like anything that has to do with pink I avoid. Because it just doesn't go with me. I hate it. So I use yellow undertone concealers. How do I look right now? Do I look, do I look great? Like am I doing my best right now? Alright, so I'm going to go in with the <clears throat> Real Techniques Blender and literally Real Techniques have my heart. They do really, really good products, brushes, sponges. I do not own a beauty blender at all because Real Techniques got it down. They got me. I just started using this one and it's bomb too, so yeah. That's not from Real Techniques, this is Ego Tools. So, with a little sponge it like goes perfectly into my eye this is how I avoid creasing like I look up and I push in the product so it goes in all the little you know folds of the eye so we went in with a second layer of concealer because one layer was not enough apparently this one looks really good it looks really covered this side wasn't so we're gonna put more because I like two layers of concealer I feel like it just like makes me complete so I'm gonna go in with the makeup forever foundation and I like using foundation as my contour or like my bronzer or whatever because it just looks so good and airbrushed but I still go in with powders after I just like starting with cream I could use concealer but I don't know I have this makeup forever foundation and it's like really good and it works really good for this so I'm going to be using a real technique brush I told you real techniques is really good I'm saying about real techniques real technique whatever so I'm going to be blending that up but so perfect like it looks so airbrushed like I'm just like and then we blend that out with the blender so that it all looks seamless like you know Super duper blended. Okay, so now I'm gonna go with my fingers and I'm gonna make sure I have no creases because I usually like set before I do, um, you know, contour. But since I did cream, it wouldn't make sense for me to like set my under eye and then use cream, then it'll be like a mess. So I rather go in with all the creams and then set my face. Um, like I said, I'm very oily. I have to set. So I usually go in with like a pressed powder before I go in with baking because just going straight to baking, it just doesn't look right on my skin. I don't know. So I'm going to look up and push it into my skin. And I'm going to blend that. Alright, so we're gonna go in with the same contour that's in the little thing. And this brush is from Forever 21. I love Forever 21 brushes. Like, I will always say that. Forever 21 brushes are bomb. So, and they're cute. So, I'm gonna go here. That's when you go the darkest. You go the darkest at the top of your, what is it called? Jawbone, I think, or cheekbone. Not cheap 
And then you just slowly pull it down. Okay, so let's contour my nose. Like I'm saying that like, you guys are gonna contour with me. Like, yeah, let's all contour Karina's nose. Like, hello. We gotta contour this. We gotta do this. Um so I'm gonna take like an angle brush. It's kinda busted. It's all good. And I'm gonna go from the top. I'm gonna pull that down. Ooh. It was a time in my life where I literally would not blend out my contour of my nose because like I hated my nose so much that I felt like blending it would like just show how big it was. And like my friend, actually my best friend, she's not just my friend, she's my best. My best used to be like, oh my god, your nose contour looks crappy, it looks too harsh. I was like, alright dude, I'm doing my best. I literally don't like my nose. So, I use concealer to conceal the center of my nose, like a straight line, and then I pull it up a little bit right here, right there, like right there, and then I pull it to the side, right there, and I pull it down. I don't pull it out too much because, I, like I said, I already set my under eye, um, and it wouldn't make sense to do that, and then with the little sponge. Then this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna like squeeze it. Like All right, so with the Airspun setting powder, I'm gonna go in with a little sponge again, and I want to push that in because I'll be creasing like crazy. And then with the same powder, I'm just gonna sculpt out right there. Like I told you guys, you do your makeup, you a surgeon. <laughs> the NY sex. <laughs> Why did I say sex? <laughs> Why did I say sex? <laughs> no way. Going in with the powder, I'm gonna bronze my skin again. This is the NYC bronzer literally though and then with the big sponge and the powder so let's sculpt that out real quick boom a oh, boom so I'm gonna clean off that powder So I'm gonna take the setting spray by Milani. It's really good. It says, make it stay setting spray. Prime, correct, and set. It's good. It's really good. It smells amazing. So. It literally smells like perfume. But it's not like strong to the point that you feel like you're burning with it. It's like, it's great. So I'm gonna set my face first. Get that out real quick. Boom, boom, boom. And then I'm going to take the two highlights, the Tarte highlight and the Laura Geller highlight. And I'm going to put that right here. See that? So I've learned how to do my highlight on my face. I feel like the best thing to do is when I go like that face. So I want to do that face and I concentrate it like right there, like on the top of my cheeks. So when I smile, you can see the highlight. It's such a fake face, right? It's like so creepy, but it works. Look at that. A flat brush and the same highlight. 
I'm gonna do a little mix and then I'm gonna put that right there on the bridge of my nose. And I'm using a flat brush so I can really like concentrate that there. And then I'm gonna take and put it at the end of my nose. Going in with this rusty red color, I'm going to put that under my eyes so that it just looks more smoky and it looks more for this season. I'm obsessed with how that came out. That's completely optional though.